Hi, I'm Bork. Welcome to the place where I do the things. Today's video is about figuring out what the hell, man. Specifically, today's video is about what the hell's going on with this. So, in a previous video, I spent a lot of time going on and on about adding liquid cooling to my 3D printer. And the purpose of that was to try to improve its printing of high performance filaments like nylon. Well, as many of you know, uh, nylon is notoriously hygroscopic and will become useless if exposed to air for even just 12 hours. So drying it before printing and keeping it dry is, is really critical to success in using it. So to that end, got myself a print dry. And to date, it has worked wonderfully for PLA. But I have had zero luck with nylon. So I started looking into it. And what I found on the print dryer website, and is confirmed by the dial on the front, the thing goes up to 70 degrees centigrade. On the website for the filament that I use, it says that the bake-out temperature is 80 degrees centigrade. Problem number one. Print dryer's response to that is bake it longer. Okay, let's try that. Nope. Nope. Nah, bro. Still Rice Krispies. The verdict? Guilty as charged. It doesn't work. But why? The engineer side of me says, define the problem space. What is the realm of possibilities that could be wrong here? So, one, environmental. The problem space could be the space. It could be a temperature problem. It might be too cold here. It might be too humid here. The other possibility is functional that the dryer doesn't get hot enough for some reason. So, to test possibility number one, humidity. I bought and installed a dehumidifier that holds the humidity in this space to about 50%. Didn't make a bit of difference, but it is more comfortable in here. Another possibility is temperature, uh, but there really isn't anything I can do about that. The space is largely unheated and changing that would be a major undertaking. So I'm constrained there. So the other major part of the problem space is functional, that the filament dryer doesn't work like it's supposed to. So what can I do to test that? Well, temperature measurement. 
The trick with these non-contact infrared thermometers is that their reading is significantly impacted by surface emissivity. So the ideal surface is one that is matte black. So I have prepared some tokens to use for this test. Two as controls to leave out here in the ambient environment. And two inside the dryer. Now this dryer has been running now for several hours, so it should be up to full operating temperature. These test samples have been out here long enough that their temperatures will have stabilized a long time ago. So these two coupons tokens out here should be representative of the ambient environment and should give us a control for the experiment. So, temperature of the first one. 21.1 .1. Temperature of the second, 20.7, so we could probably say it's roughly 21 centigrade. Inside the dryer, we have 54.3 on the top level. And 61.9, say 62 on the bottom level. I'd like to point out that I have the temperature control turned all the way up, and I have this whole time, to, it says 70 C. We've established that it's not getting as hot as it's supposed to. The question is why? So there are a couple of possibilities. One is that a thermostat is calibrated a little bit low and is turning the heating element off before it should. The other is that the thing simply doesn't have enough moxie to get all the way up to temperature. How do we test that? So, to test that, it's really simple. These things have a very simple mechanical thermostat in them, like an old, old school wall thermostat with a bimetallic strip in it. And when it turns on and off, you can hear it click. So all I have to do is wait for the click. There's no click. This thing's going balls out and not getting hot enough. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But it is disappointing. It cost me about a hundred US dollars. So what can I do? Well, I have a couple options. Since at best it can get 40 degrees centigrade above whatever the ambient temperature is, I can modify the ambient temperature around the dryer. Build a partial enclosure around it, something like that. The trouble with that is, it can be a little bit dangerous. I generally don't want to do that with heaters. The other option is, I can say, screw that noise. and just get a real food dehydrator. So, this thing should hold several spools of filament, and it is supposed to get up to 167 Fahrenheit, or 75 centigrade. So we'll test it, see how it does. I'm going to turn the temperature up as high as it'll go and see what happens. I'm going to try to turn the temperature up as high as it will go. There it is, the limit. And now we wait. Houston, we have a problem. It doesn't look like this thing's getting up to temperature, and I turned it up to high, and realized now that there's another problem. 
this thing exhausts its heat out the bottom and it is warping the HDPE uh, surface of my workbench here. So I have to do something different. Well, this isn't starting out so great. Ruining a work surface is probably not a very good feature for a product. See where it goes. Two test coupons as a control. Food dehydrator, take two. This thing's been going for close to a couple hours now. It's probably about as warm as it's going to get, so it's a good time to test it, I think. Ambient, it's close to 22. Let's try inside. Not encouraging. So it's about five degrees better than the print dry, but still more than 10 degrees lower than the set point of 75. How frustrating is that? But just to make sure there isn't something more to this equation that I might be missing, try a couple of independent third parties. This one I've had for a long time and has been quite trustworthy. Let's see what it has to say. Come back in a little while. Well, let's see what we have. We got 61, about 60 even on my candy thermometer. And 62 and a half here. So, this thing is no better than the print dry. It is every bit as much of a turd. That number is just a lie. I started this with the question, what the hell? I'm still asking, what the hell? I could go full nerd on this thing and modify it, but that would be really risky. I don't know what increasing its operating temperature would actually do. It's a pretty terrible design and with the hot air coming out the bottom, I really don't know what I would put it on long term. It might just be time to think about doing something a bit different. This dehydrator thing is just not working out.